For almost 100 years, Penn State has been a symbol of excellence in college football. Typical of that tradition has been the last 10 years. Hello, I'm Jimmy Cephalo. Welcome to Volume 3 in our series, Great Moments in Penn State Football. ...on that 1982 squad, two offensive backs were picked in the first round of the NFL Draft, and Joe Paterno was named Coach of the Year. Coach, the Lions had come close several times to finishing number one. Did you think 1982 was going to be the year? Going into the 1982 season, uh, we kind of figured we were going to have a legitimate chance to win a national championship. We had, we had great people in the key spots. We had a, a, a big league quarterback who eventually was the number one draft pick, Ty Blackledge. We had a number one draft pick at the tailback spot. We had a great wideout in Kenny Jackson, a big league tight end in Mike McCluskey. We had a good, solid offensive line and a very alert, aggressive defensive football team coming back. So we had, and our kicking game was solid. So. The only thing that concerned us was how difficult the schedule was going to be. And, and it proved that proved to be very difficult. First on the schedule, the Temple Owls, a team that had given Penn State some scares in recent years. The Lions had won by 1 point in 75, 1 point in 76, 3 points in 78. But now it was the championship season. We started out against Temple, and for a change, we won it easily. We didn't have a... We scored, I think, the first three or four times we, had a, we got the football. It was Penn State's passing game that led the way. The first score came with less than six minutes gone. Blackledge looking to throw, and he'll throw the screen. It is cut by Warner at the 40. At the 30, He's got the 20. It. Makes a cut at the 10, and a Penn State touchdown. Blackledge threw two more touchdown passes in the first quarter, including a 31-yarder to Kevin Ball. The Lions passed for 152 yards in the first half while rushing for only 10. In the fourth quarter, the Penn State defense gave the Lions another opportunity. First down and 10 yards to go. Temple with Reardon being chased and sacked inside the 25-yard line by Scott Radisson. Nine minutes left in the game. Penn State 24, Temple 7. Temple with the ball at their own 23, second down, long yardage, 25 to go. And a fumble on the snap, and I believe Penn State has recovered the ball at about the 22. But if I'm not mistaken, it was Walker Lee Ashley who came up with a loose football. Blackledge took the Lions into the end zone with his fourth touchdown pass of the day, which set a new school record. The final, Penn State 31, Temple 14. Then we had a great football game with Maryland. I think the Maryland game is uh, one of the most exciting offensive games we've ever been in. Blackledge had a super day, and they had a kid by the name of Boomer Ierson, a left-hander from Long Island, who, who threw really well. So it was a back-and-forth, high-scoring game. Slot to the left. Fake, and as Ierson rolls, he's looking, Not man, wide open, Davis! Touchdown, Maryland! Russell Davis wide open and a 51-yard touchdown pass from Boomer Esiason to Russell Davis. Watch this. This is a beautiful play. A little flake of a counter with a rollout action. Throws the Penn State secondary. Here's Davis coming across on a post. Wide open, perfectly thrown football. Six points, and Maryland is certainly back in this game. Maryland had a one-point lead, but the running of fullback John Williams put the Lions back in scoring position. First down and 10, Penn State, near the 44-yard line. Williams again, the sweep, he's got a lot of room, 50, 45, to the 40, he's going to go, 30, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. That's great running, but again, Rocky Washington made the key block. Williams. 50 yards rushing, averaging more than six per carry. Again, the slot to the right side. Fake to Williams. Blackwood throwing man wide open to Washington. Touchdown! Great catch, great call. That's Frank why they him. Garrity wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Well, this is a great call. They fake Jonathan Williams up the middle. It's a great catch. The ball is thrown behind Garrity. He's on a quick post from his outside position, and he makes a stupendous catch. Blackledge's fourth touchdown pass of the game was to Kenny Jackson early in the fourth quarter. 
The Lions needed the points because Maryland's Esiason wasn't done yet. He finished with 276 passing yards and two touchdowns of his own. But Penn State hung on to win 39-31. The next week against Rutgers, Todd Blackledge again threw for four touchdowns. The most spectacular play, however, came on a Rutgers punt. The Lions defenders were watching for a fake. Here's the kick. Looking for the corner. Mark Robinson, he's got a hole. Here he goes. He's got one man to beat and blockers ahead. The 40, he's going to go. Mark Robinson is gone for a touchdown. And there are no flags on the field. That was for 92 yards, Stan. Penn State went on to win 49-14. But the assignment was much tougher the following week. Portable lighting was installed at Beaver Stadium for the nationally televised showdown against Nebraska. I suppose when I get old and start to think back about some of the great football games we've been involved in, uh, certainly the Nebraska game uh, in 82 has got to be one of them. There's just so many great plays. Uh, it was a game uh, that we won in the, in, in, in the very last seconds of the game after Nebraska had made a great drive of its own to score with about a minute and 30, 35 seconds to play. First down, 10 yards to go. Gill keeping, pitches out, Rozier's got it. He's the five, and he's down to the three yard line. Oh my, what a play by Turner Gill. Well, that was phenomenal football. We waited to the last minute, got the pitch off. This is why Nebraska is a great offensive team. Let's take a look at it. They pull the guard, watch Hamilton come up. There's the pitch. The corner got caught a little wide, and Robinson missed the tackle, and Nebraska is right on the goal line. Third down and goal. They need a they need a penetrating type of a play here. Quarterback he didn't get in. He got in. Touchdown, Nebraska. He got in. They rolled. He got in. And for the first time, Nebraska has taken the lead, 23, 21, 118 to play. And the kickoff return here is absolutely critical. Seibel kicking off, it's deep. Bow, five yards deep, will stay in there. No time goes off the clock. That's a very cool football player right there. And there's a 15-yard penalty on someone, I hope. Personal foul, Nebraska. Well, that'll march it up, 15 to 35. Penn State has two timeouts left. Looking for field goal position, maybe even a chance to win it. Three wide receivers. Kevin Bow is in the game. Slot right, Blackledge to throw. He dumps it off. Got some room, Nichols, 40, 45, and he's out to the 50-yard line and down to the 48-yard line. The clock will stop on the first down. It'll be a 15-yard game and a first down for Penn State. All right, good call. Nebraska drops a lot of people off. He's got all the time, dumps it off to Nichols, makes a good inside cut, gets a good block from McGinnis, good block from Garrity. Blackledge looking again. He's got a man up on the sideline. Bow's got it. He's hit, and it's incomplete. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. So the clock will stop with 57 seconds to play. The gain would have been seven. It is no gain, obviously. It is second down and ten. Once again, Stanley, what's going through Joe Paterno's mind is whether he's going to go for the tie or the win. If he's just going to go for the tie, if he hits something down and across the middle, I'm sure he can get in field goal range. Possibly you get a lucky break, you could go all the way. But it's very difficult as a coach to decide what you want to do after you played a ball game like this. Second down and ten. Blackledge looks, fires, got a man wide open, and is caught at the 32-yard line. First down, Penn State. Kenny Jackson makes the reception, and the Nittany Lions have a first down. He got out of bounds. That's important. 
I know this, this is a hurry up offense. The auto ball eyes everything on the line of scrimmage. Probably try to get a post over the middle. We're going to have to have some, some precision uh, uh, blocking by the offensive line and precision pass routes. Well, you've got a lot of time. 52 seconds and two timeouts. They Penn might, State at the 33 yard line of Nebraska. Might go to the draw. There it is. It is a draw. Nowhere. Nowhere. A loss of one. They tried to catch him, and Penn State will use a timeout. Now like you've that. got one timeout in 35 seconds, so you still have time to pick up your first down. Well, you got, you got, you got only got 11 yards to make, and they're giving him a lot of inside stuff. They got the one first down. He should go for a curl type of a pattern to the inside. Now yeah. here. Here it is. He's got him. He's, He's got, got him at open. He's got first and he scored down. for first down to 21. Timeout. Penn State timeout with 28 seconds to play. He's got the first down. He's got it. Kenny Jackson. He's got the first down to 21. But again, that was great. Is what we said. They ran to the curl. He got the first down. He gave him a little room. They're afraid of touchdown. Okay, he's got the first down. Now, he's got 28 seconds. The clock is stopped. You gotta figure that he can no longer can only get possibly two plays off or a field goal. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding. He did not give him forward progress where he caught the ball. He's got it anyway. Now actually that helped Penn State because now Penn State is gonna be able to come to the line of scrimmage with a play call and get it off. Right. They still have one timeout remaining. First down and ten, Penn State at the 23 yard line. Could be the tight end up the up the gut, up the middle, that they go to. They're worried about the wideouts here, Stan. As you can see, Blackledge looking. He can run the ball if he wants. Run it out of bounds. Run it out of bounds. And he does. He gets out of bounds to the 15 yard line. Well, but he used up a lot of time. He that play was stopped at 28. He used up 15 seconds. He got to the let's see where they mark it. 17 yard line it'll be second down and five but the downs are no longer important they've got 13 seconds left they still have one timeout remaining and at the, 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 this particular time out running out of bounds he's got time for one more play and possibly a field goal if that's what he wants to do but i don't know i know my brother i know joe i think he'll go for the win if they can get something a post down across the middle might pull it out Blackledge back to throw. He's, He's open. Got He's got a man open and his cut at the two-yard line. Nine seconds to go. He's out of bounds at the two-yard line. With the one best. timeout left, Stan. He's got a timeout. But in this particular situation, one running play will terminate the ball game. They almost have to throw the ball, come up with something like a rollout type of a situation, and try to get the ball in the end zone. Well, now, we talked about being further upfield and going for a field goal. Now it is first down at the two-yard line. Nine seconds to play. I think they'll put Williams in motion and run that sweep that they've done before. Here it is. All right, Williams goes to a wing left. Coles and motion. Mumford. Here comes Williams' motion to the near side. Here's Blackledge rolling. He's looking. He's throwing. Touchdown! They deserved it, Stan. Listen they deserved to the crowd. it. Listen and look at this crowd. They deserved it, Stan. They didn't go for the field goal. Oh, my. Oh. Oh, my. A 65 yard. Hey. What's the fake? What Todd Blackledge is a candidate for the Heisman Award. Kirk Bowman makes his second touchdown. And who is Kirk Bowman? He never played tight end before. Look at Joe. Joe Bertano. Look at Joe. Look at him. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Stan, have you ever seen a better college football game? Absolutely not. We had some couple of controversial calls. A lot of Nebraska fans think we expanded the sideline 
to let McCluskey catch the football <clears throat> inbounds. And a lot of people don't know whether we caught a touchdown pass inbounds. But that, uh, I'm, but in any case, uh, we won that football game, and then we knew we were, uh, we were for real. But then we had to go down and play Alabama. The game was in Birmingham, and it did not start off well for Penn State. Single safety back for Alabama. And the kick is blocked. Alabama's going to recover at the 14-yard line. That's the first big break in the game. They must have seen something. Alabama quarterback Walter Lewis took the ball into the end zone himself, and the Tide had the early lead. Todd Blackwood brought the Lions right back when he checked the defense and called an audible. Second down and three yards to go. Penn State near their own 31. They are in a wing to the left. Blackwood over the middle. Man, what a ball! He's going for a touchdown. Warner is going for it. Nice that was a beautiful call. That was an audible. And then late in the game when we were starting to make our drive, uh, Ralph Gier, Gier Camaro, Jack Camaro, who was our punter, we're going to get some uh, Irish punters one of these days, uh, went back to punt, and actually one of our kids backed up into it and blocked our own punt, and they went in and, and scored after that. So, uh, you know, you give up two touchdowns on two kicking plays, ordinarily you're not even going to be in a football game. That's, a, that's the way it turned out. Darrell White back deep at his own 12. Now here's where you need Jack Amaro to give you the big punt. Oh, he, bust, he kicked it into his own man. Oh, no. He kicked it into his own man. Oh, my goodness. He kicked it into his own man. And that's the ball game right there. What happened? Number 35, Sutter, when we place a Robinson, stepped back into the punt. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible play for Penn State. It'll take a miracle now for Penn State to get back in this ball game. Watch him. You see him move right back into the punt? He walked right into the punter. Unbelievable. And Alabama is about to pick up another gift. Following Alabama's touchdown and two-point conversion to lead 35-21, Penn State has the ball. It is intercepted. It is intercepted. Rocky Goldburn or Eddie Lowe. The game ended with a score, Alabama 42, Penn State 21. Uh, and then after that, we just had to suck it up and say, hey, we got to win every one of them. And I remember the kids getting together and say, hey, we're going to win every game right now, and we still got a chance to win a national championship. And that's what they did. We ended up winning the, the rest of them. The rest of the season started with the homecoming game against Syracuse. This game also marked the awakening of the Lion defensive unit. For example, Dave Peffenroth made two interceptions in the first quarter. Norley back to throw. He flushed out of there. Now he's going to throw it. It is intercepted. Dave Peffenroth put the interception, and he's brought down at the Syracuse 34-yard line. Watch to the right this time. Norley. This time over the middle, and it is intercepted by Penn State. Dave Paffenroth makes his second interception of the game. And Mike Zordich's sack pushed Syracuse out of effective field goal range. Tailback Kurt Warner had his first 100-yard rushing game of the season, capped by a 34-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. The final, Penn State 28, Syracuse 7. At Morgantown, West Virginia rolled up 382 yards in total offense. But Penn State's big play defense kept the Mountaineers off the scoreboard. In the fourth quarter, the Lions led 10-0, but West Virginia was threatening. Linebacker Scott Radisek stopped the threat. His 85-yard interception return put the game out of reach. Penn State shut out West Virginia 24-0 for their 24th straight win over the Mountaineers. The next game was at Boston College. Again, the opposition piled up the yardage. 
656 yards of total offense. BC quarterback Doug Flutie passed for 520 yards in the game. Even though we were well ahead most of the game, we never felt comfortable because Doug would either throw the ball downfield or he'd be a big player or he'd run around back there and make something happen. So it got to be a very exciting football game. But again, the line defense came up with the big plays. Ratisak intercepted Flutie late in the first quarter. That led, early in the second quarter, to a Penn State touchdown. Here come the Nittany Lions out of the huddle. First down and 10 at the Boston College 12. Play fake. Black was looking all the time. In the end zone, it is cut for a touchdown. Greg Garrity with the touchdown catch, sliding along the turf, and Penn State has scored again. 618 yards total offense of their own. The Lions outscored the Eagles 52-17. It was another high scoring game the following Saturday as Penn State shut out North Carolina State 54-0. The Lions were now 8-1. They still had to face three teams though. Notre Dame at 6-1-1, Pittsburgh 7-1, and a bowl game opponent, probably undefeated Georgia. Joe Paterno said that Penn State was now in the three-game playoff for the national championship. And the first of those games would be Penn State's first ever visit to Notre Dame Stadium. The Lions took advantage of two Notre Dame fumbles to take the lead in the second quarter. Slight angle to Gansitano's right. Ball's down. Kick is up. It is good. Nick Gansitano with a 29-yard field goal. Penn State... With their second field goal of the quarter has taken a 13 to 7 lead. 141 to play in the second quarter. There is Alan Pinkett who has come close to breaking a couple. Massimo Mike to kick off for Penn State. Triple safeties with Ballage and Stone. But Pinkett is the deep man in the middle. Here's Mike's kick. High, but again a bit short. At the 7 is Pinkett. Outside to the 20. The 30. Still at his feet. The 50. He's going to go all the way. Forget it. Alan Pinkett is gone. That was a great run. And boy, does he have speed. A 93-yard kickoff return by Alan Pinkett. Notre Dame had the lead at halftime. Obviously, Notre Dame, Penn State's got to be a big game for you, especially when you're late in the year and you're, you're on your way, hopefully, to a shot at the national championship. And we had to play very well in the last quarter in that football game. We, we scored 11 points to come from behind against a very determined Notre Dame team. And uh, I think our team showed its championship character in that game. I think they were down and uh, they knew everything was at stake. and. Uh, they, they came out of it and, and did the things they had to do in the fourth quarter to win it. First and ten, Penn State at the Notre Dame 48. Short drop, over the middle, Warner's wide open! Good he will not be caught, touchdown, Kerr Warner, Penn State! That's the check off we've been looking for. He was open in the first half, they didn't see him. This time, Blackledge checked off, caught Warner one-on-one. -on -one. He just outran the linebacker, and it's six points. George, is that the same checkoff they used against Alabama for the 69 yard? Exactly yarder? the same. Whoa. 80-yard drive, just like that. Stan, the last time Penn State kicked off, they got in big trouble. Here's Manka. He kicks it straight away, and it's coming right to Pe Oh, no, it's coming to Ballage. His knee touched at the one-yard line. He's down at the one yard line. Now watch the Penn State defense. They, this is a big opportunity here for them to put the ball game possibly away. They will come, you bet your life they will come. Let's see if Notre Dame tries to grind it out. They are going with a double tight end offense. First and 10 at their own one yard line. Take it, he's hit, he's dropped for a safety. They had to come with him. They had him on a six-inch yard line. The two points is what they really wanted, and Penn State came across the line of scrimmage almost free. Walker, Lee Ashley, 
got the penetration and made the hit. Kurt Warner now with 90 yards on 21 carries, heading for his 16th 100-yard game. And remember, Penn State has never lost when Kurt Warner's gained 100. Five and a half to play. Second down and eight at the 40. Warner. You got it. It's outside. Goodbye. Kurt Warner, there's no one to beat. 30, 20, makes the move and slips and falls at the 15-yard line. They blitzed the corner back and he got caught. That set up a Nick Gancitano field goal, and the Lions win the first game of their three-game playoff, 24-14. You know, as we came to the pit game in 82, uh, you start to work your way down closer and closer to that national championship. Every game gets awfully tough and big. Uh, and uh, you nobody know, lets you have anything easy. And Pitt didn't let us have anything easy that day. It was, we were behind at halftime. Pitt elected to receive the football, and we kicked off, and we had the wind at our back. And uh, Lion punter Ralph Giacomaro used that tailwind to boom a 50-yard punt down to the pit eight. When it came down for the Panthers to punt, they could manage only a 32-yarder into the win, and Penn State had good field position. Second down and 11. 8.40 to play in the third quarter. Blitz. Blackwood's back. He throws over the middle. He's got his man. Watch it. And he jumps it. That gave the Nittany Lions a 10-7 lead. Our defense just took over the football game, and uh, we didn't let Pitt have anything the second half, and we, we went in and we won it. Defense set up two Penn State field goals that gave the Lions a nine-point lead. with the score, Penn State 19, Pitt 10. We did in the Notre Dame game. We came from behind and played very tough football with a lot of pressure on us. And I think those were the things that, that, that indicated to me that we were a national championship football team, beating clubs of that caliber the way we did. But to indicate to the rest of the world that they were a championship football team, the Lions had to do it one more time. Went down in the Sugar Bowl and played one of the great Great football games I've ever been involved in as far as uh, a team playing very well with a lot of pressure on it. Uh, and, and we beat Georgia and, and uh, won the first national championship we ever got credit for at Penn State. The Lions took the open kickoff 80 yards in seven plays, and Blackledge completed four out of four passes. Warner swept left end for the score less than three minutes into the game. Later, a punt return and a pass set up Warner's second touchdown. And Nick Gancitano's 45-yard field goal put Penn State on top 20-3 in the second quarter. But Georgia passed for a touchdown before halftime, and Herschel Walker added another at the start of the third quarter. The Bulldogs got only two first downs the rest of the game, however. Todd Blackledge put it out of reach when he completed a 48-yard scoring pass to split end Greg Garrity. And the Nittany Lions were number one for real. Todd Blackledge, as most people know, were roommates for four years at Penn State. They were, they were great friends. Uh, Todd has often described Kurt as the brother he never had. Uh, 
Todd and his family were great for Kurt. Uh, they, they were both unusual individuals, very individual in their outlook on life, but yet have found something in each other that made both of them strong.